the Limp Mansion in St. Louis is known to be one of the most haunted places in America due to a tragic history. The 33-room home was built in 1860 by William Lemp, a successful brewery owner who ended up taking his own life in 1904 after the youngest of his four sons, Frederick, died. A few years later, his wife also died of cancer in the house. Then, in 1922, William Lemp Jr. took his own life in the same room William Sr. had. As if that weren't enough tragedy for one place, in 1949, Charles Lemp, William's third son, shot his dog in the basement of the home and then took his own life in his room. That same year, the house was sold and transformed into a boarding house where reports of hauntings began. According to Destination America, witnesses have experienced burning sensations and slamming doors. Today, the Lemp Mansion is a restaurant and inn that also holds events. On Sunday night, the inn hosts a murder mystery dinner. Los Angeles is one of the best destinations for haunted house hunting, and this Bavarian-style home in Beverly Hills has a particularly gruesome history. In 1932, it was home to the iconic actress Jean Harlow and her abusive husband Paul Byrne, who shot himself in the head while standing in front of the mirror. Their butler discovered him and called MGM instead of the police, so there were tons of rumors that it wasn't actually suicide. Many suspected Byrne's ex-girlfriend, a suspicion exacerbated by her jumping off a boat to her death a couple of days later. Jean moved out after his death, but died only a few years later, at the age of 26. But wait, it gets creepier. In 1963, celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring bought the home and lived there with his girlfriend Sharon Tate until she left him for Roman Polanski. They were still friends and remained so until both of them were murdered by the Charles Manson cult. Tate was the same age as Harlow when she passed. But back when the couple lived in the Harlow house, Tate told several friends of creepy occurrences in the home and even mentioned it in interviews. For example, once when she was sleeping in the master bedroom alone, she saw a creepy little man. Her friends say she believed it to be Paul Byrne's ghost. She was so freaked out when she saw the alleged ghost that she ran out of the room and then saw a hanging shadowy corpse with its throat slit in the hallway. There are also stories about two other people dying in the swimming pool over the years. Massachusetts has no shortage of haunted mansions, it seems and the S.K. Pierce Victorian is one of the state's eeriest. The original occupant, Sylvester Pierce, had just started making his fortune in the furniture business when he built this home for himself, his son, and his wife, Susan. As a man about town, he hosted many notable people in his 7,000 square foot home throughout the years, including President Calvin Coolidge, Betty Davis, and Norman Rockwell. Only a week after moving into the home, Susan fell ill and passed away from a mysterious bacterial disease. A year later, he remarried Ellen, a woman 30 years his junior, and had two more children. Years later, when both Sylvester and Ellen had passed away, his sons embarked on a fiery feud about the property as well as the furniture company. But the Great Depression swept in and made their choice easier since the company basically went bankrupt. The youngest son, Edward, was given control of the home when he turned it into a boarding house. It became a hot spot for illicit activities, including the murders and sudden tragic deaths of several occupants, according to local lore. 
As a result of these violent ends, guests have reported every kind of haunting imaginable, from visions of apparitions to flying objects, disembodied sounds, pressure, temperature drops, and more. Located in Fairfield County, Ohio, until recently, the Mudhouse Mansion has a bad reputation. Nobody can seem to agree on when it was built, but it dates back sometime between the 1840s and 1900. Unlike other abandoned mansions on the list, you sadly can no longer visit it, as the home was demolished in 2015 after not being occupied since the 1930s. The last resident, at least legally speaking, was Lulu Hartman Mast, and the current owner of the property is her relative, Jean Mast. Because there's so little information about who lived here and when, and because abandoned places tend to ignite the dark side of the imagination, there are tons of legends around alleged atrocities occurring and consequent hauntings. The sources don't seem to be very credible though. You never hear as much about haunted apartments as haunted houses, which is strange considering that apartments have much more turnover and therefore a higher likelihood of something or someone evil having lived there before you moved in. That was definitely the case with 455A Sackett Street in Brooklyn. One woman who grew up there writes about her first-hand experiences including unexplained fires, seriously bad energies, family tragedies, personal suffering, and here's the kicker, the body of a child discovered in the wall after several suspicious sightings of a similar looking shadow child in the mirror. Several other past tenants also corroborate her claims. The Hotel Monte Vista has numerous paranormal guests they can't get rid of. The hotel, which opened as a community hotel in 1927, named after the townspeople who helped raise the funds for its construction, has a history of underground opium dens, speakeasies, and gambling. Today, the hotel is known for the paranormal activity that haunts some of the rooms and halls. Guests who stayed in room 220 have experienced the TV changing channels on its own accord, and some have said they felt cold hands touching them in their sleep. There's also reportedly a phantom bellboy who knocks on doors and announces room service, but when guests get to the door, no one's there. One of the more popular and possibly most disturbing encounters is the sound of an infant crying in the basement. The hotel website reads, staff have found themselves running upstairs to escape the sound of the cries. Though the sounds are very real to those who hear them, there has been no information that has explained the phenomenon. Rumored to be on top of a burial ground is the Myrtles Plantation in Louisiana, which is the home to at least 12 different ghosts. Built in 1796, ghost stories center around the tale of an enslaved woman named Chloe who had her ear chopped off after she was reportedly caught eavesdropping. Seeking revenge, Chloe killed two of the master's daughters by poisoning a birthday cake. She was then hanged by her fellow enslaved people and today is reportedly seen wandering the plantation with a turban on to conceal her ear. If you want to investigate things for yourself, you can stay at the plantation for $175 a night. Built in 1929 in Baroque style, the Mink Song Ghost House, aka the Lou Family Mansion, is a place with a heartbreaking history. 
Located in the Taiwanese countryside, it's been abandoned since the 1950s when the family fled abruptly. Like all mysterious places, there's plenty of lore around the family and why they left the once beautiful place. Local legend says the maid was having an affair with her employer, Lu Rong Yu, and when the secret came out, she jumped down the well to her death. But since she did not live to tell the tale, who's to say another family member didn't push her? Then she came back to haunt the family until they finally left. A few years later, it was occupied by members of the Kuomintang of China, many of whom were also thought to have died of suicide, which exacerbated its reputation as haunted. People who visit report plenty of ghostly sightings. During the mid-20th century, this large Los Feliz home was the seemingly happy home of Dr. Harold Pearlson and his family until the horrific night of December 6, 1959 when he murdered his wife in her sleep with a hammer and attempted to murder his three children before drinking acid to kill himself. Fortunately, his eldest daughter let out a scream when he struck her in the head, waking up the younger children, who then walked into the hallway to find out what was going on. During the commotion, they were all able to flee. Before the murder-suicide, he was a successful doctor who invented a new type of syringe after investing most of his money into its research and production, but he got screwed out of the rights leading investigators to blame financial problems. Other creepy details include a passage of Dante's Divine Comedy left upon his bedside table. Two years later, it was sold to the Enriquez family, who used it as a storage unit, and their son continued to do so until he sold it to a couple in 2016 who had plans to fix it up but it seems to have scared them off because within a few years it's on the market again. Photographers also report a feeling of needing to run away from the house when they get close up to it. Located near Lake Como, Italy, the House of Witches dates back to 1854 to 1857 when it was built as a summer house for Count Felix de Vici. The family was only able to spend a few years there as their lives were mired in tragedy right after it was built. First, the architect died a year after construction. Then, in 1862, Count de Vici came home to discover his wife murdered and his daughter missing. When he could not find her after a year of searching, he died by suicide. His brother then moved into the home and his family continued to live there until World War II. It's been vacant since the 1960s and an avalanche in 2002 wiped out all the houses in the area except this one. In 1937, millionaire inventor Norman G. Baker posed as a doctor and turned the hotel into a hospital that he said could cure cancer. Baker, who had a fetish for purple, painted many sections of the hospital in the color, and today the chimneys remain the same color. In addition to wearing purple shirts and ties, he drove a purple car as well. People came from all over with hopes of curing their cancer, and many who were treated died. Eventually, Baker was exposed and run out of town, and today the property is an active hotel. It's said to be haunted by several ghosts, including a bearded man wearing Victorian clothing and a five-year-old girl. In 1907, Mizpah Hotel opened as one of the first luxury hotels in Nevada. With a rich history and elaborate decor, 
The hotel is best known for its legend of the Lady in Red. While the date remains unclear, the story goes like this. A woman was murdered in her room on the fifth floor. Some say it was a jealous ex-boyfriend, while others say the Lady in Red had been caught cheating by her husband and he killed her in a jealous rage. Those who stayed at the hotel say the Lady in Red whispers in men's ears and leaves pearls from her broken necklace on guest pillows. Guests can stay in the Lady in Red suite to experience it themselves. The Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum was designed to house 250 patients when it opened in 1864. Fast forward to the 1950s when the facility reached its peak and had more than 2400 patients living in overcrowded and inhumane conditions with some even kept in cages. In 1994 the asylum closed and today there are reports of paranormal activity with souls of patients lingering and roaming the halls. You can take an overnight ghost hunt tour from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. at the asylum, a two-hour paranormal tour from 10.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., or a 90-minute day tour. Seeing as it's the only preserved and intact family home from the 19th century in all of New York City, it makes sense that this house has also been the source and subject of many ghost stories. The Treadwell family lived here for over 100 years and the last family occupant was Gertrude, the youngest daughter, who died in the home in 1933. Staff, visitors, and even passerby say they experience weird, disembodied things here. Guests can even take a candlelit ghost tour of the museum to decide for themselves. And even if you don't catch an apparition, or hear children playing, and floorboards in empty rooms, you'll at least get the sense that you're intruding on someone else's space in a completely different time since it's virtually the same as when Gretchen died. In 1890, the Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco was an etiquette school for girls. Today, it has 48 rooms for guests, though some believe the ghost of Miss Mary Lake, the school's headmistress, still lingers. Folks who stay in room 410, Miss Mary Lake's former office, have woken up to find their blankets closely tucked around them in bed or their clothes unpacked.